Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Tim McCarthy, Chairman of Incantera. Welcome back, Tim. Hope you're well. I'm very well, thank you, especially after our announcement this morning. Absolutely, yeah. So I would just, uh, as you alluded to there, the company's recently announced a significant update on the launch of its Skin Plus Cell Skincare line with Marionaud in Switzerland and Austria. The first production order initially set at 25,000 units has been doubled twice to 100,000 units, increasing expected revenues from 2 million to approximately 4 million pounds. Further orders are anticipated to grow, driven by high demand and the planned European and Asian rollouts, with revenues projected to exceed £10 million for the financial year ending March 31st, 2025. Additionally, Incanthera has secured £4.1 million through an institutional investor-led subscription and share sale at 15 pence per share, with proceeds funding the increased production schedule. The company has convened a general meeting on June the 20th, 2024 to approve necessary share authorities. Sounds like things are progressing well there, Tim. Uh, well, I think that's an understatement, actually, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're delighted. And as the announcement advises, that this is a further development of our relationship with Marino and Anais Watson. And I, I use that word relationship. Uh, it's becoming more like a partnership than a supply deal with a with a, a retail outlet. And that I think the messaging that comes all through the RNS this morning. I mean you you quite succinctly did some of the uh, the summary of the, the RNS there, Phil. But what un, what underlies this is our continued discussions with the group and their their enthusiasm to launch skin and cell into their stores. And that's not only in Europe, but also we, we've alluded to the fact that we've picked up discussions with S. Watson, the, the main group out of headquartered out of Hong Kong, about the launch into Asia. And we originally indicated that would be uh, around the first quarter of 2025. And they're keen, as we are, to see if we can get that launch brought forward. So we're in discussions with, with the group about that. But the main thrust of the, the news update this morning was very much that following the last RNS, which you alluded to, when we announced that we doubled the initial order from 25,000 to 50,000 units in anticipation of high demand, we continue to have conversations with Marino. And, you know, they've emphasized to us that they would like to go bigger and better and, and broader as quickly as possible. The only restriction on that from us is financing. And that's always been the case. And, and it will be the case as we go forward. This rollout will increase and, and get bigger, both in Europe and Asia, depending on how much finance that we can bring on board. And previously, we've made it quite clear that after the fundraising December, we were well set up, we had enough funding, we had enough funding to deliver the 50,000 units that was the first production order, and then to roll out after that with a mixture of revenues coming in and trade finance kicking in later this year. And we made that that statement in this morning's RNS, just to say that it wasn't our intention and it, it to raise more equity funding. However, the interest generated in the city of London and amongst the small cap institutional investors has been unprecedented in my experience, especially for a small company like ours. And directly to the company and through our company brokers, we've been asked to re reconsider that decision not to take any more equity finance on board. And we took a long, hard think about it. And we talked to Mariano. The bottom line is that we're balancing the extra dilution. We're taking on some significant funding, improving the profile of the shareholder base. And I'm a great believer, and I think I've talked to you guys about this before, I'm a great believer in that balance between the institutional shareholders and retail to, to give you a good balance of the, of the shareholder base. And this was an ideal opportunity to bring some very, very well-respected small company fund managers through their funds into the stock, which they weren't before. They were keen to help us expand the company with extra financing. So it's a balance between that extra funding allow us to really drive the production, the, the delivery to the group, to drive those revenues, as we alluded to this morning, that first production order raising from 50 to 100,000 should drive the first revenues from two to four. And a previous guidance of 10 million for the full year to March next year I didn't want to sort of get pinned against the cross about putting a number on it. 
But previously, we said we get to ten million. We will we will very easily exceed ten million for this financial year. So, so how how did they? You originally started with that twenty five thousand, then as you say, went to fifty, and then a hundred. So, how does Marionode anticipate that higher demand? I mean, is it is it through marketing and research and things like that? Can you just tell us a bit about how they've suddenly realised they need more? It isn't a sudden realisation on their part, to be honest, Phil, because they have always uh, been behind the product range they know it's going to appeal to their consumer base both in in europe and in hong kong they've done their own market research on this uh, and they're very very excited about the launch of this and it's always been restricted by how much we can put into inventory it's as simple as that and we have to manage that rollout the launch of the rollout with marion and watson's according to how much we can put into inventory because as you'll appreciate and as your listeners will appreciate if we start with a certain amount in so many stores, they their prediction is that will go like that, just very quickly off the shelf. We will immediately have to replenish that. And then, of course, with rollout, we've got to put new product into new stores. So we're working with a very complex matrix along with Marino to say, right, we can produce these, these many units in this time frame. So according to what you expect the demand to be, how many stores do we open first and how many product do we put on the shelf? We will have in the background at least you know one reorder to replenish the shelves so they don't run dry. And then we'll work with them as to how quickly we roll it out. And it's purely an equation about how much money we can put into inventory. So we made the statement this morning that all the money we've raised is going into inventory. We don't need it for running the company or anything else because we've got all that previously. So it's an enormous fill-up. And it is back to this balance, as I was saying, we will be driving revenues and value and share price and valuation for the shareholders, I think, more this way by taking a smaller, a small dilution and we'll be driving that value for shareholders. So it, it's a decision we took, but I think overall it's in for the benefit of all shareholders, not just those who are investing at this particular time. So, Tim, obviously very positive moves forward. I mean, in in terms of so people understand this, you you know, you're talking about by March 2025, you should have £10 million pounds of, of profit or revenue, is that that you talked about? So that, that's revenue, and the EBITDA we're expecting is about 30%. So you can see we'll be throwing off quite a lot of cash for all of that. And my full intentions, I think I've explained before, is to kick in trade finance towards the second half of the year. We have conversations going with six different preferred uh, trade finance outfits. They really want to back us. And the big tick in the box for them is is the quality of the, the customer, in this case, Mariano Stroke Watsons. Uh, that is always their risk factor whenever they're, they're providing trade finance for the company. So I'm well into negotiations on bringing those deals together. And those are going to be pretty you know significant fundings because they're a Groups that are offering five million on the one hand, ten million on another. So you can see, in relation to the amount of money we've raised in equity over the last, say, six months, including today, plus, say, put it against the ten million revenues we're going to generate for the whole year, or in excess of ten million, then getting that firepower of trade finance is really going to boost this. And that's why I and the and the, the team are quite confident that we, that we will we will more than beat that ten million target for the year revenues and what sort of relationship is it with as watson then you you produce and send them the product they pay you straight away or you have to wait for the sales to happen how does that work very simple they order it we deliver it they pay for it <laughs> okay so you don't have to wait for it to sit on a shelf no, and we sort of they're basically waiting for it so i mean do you anticipate that the two hundred and fifty thousand units that are going to be for for asia to, to increase as well? Could we talk in half a million units going into Asia there in terms of well, later, I'm not later make, this year? I'm not going to make any predictions on, on units at this time. Uh, we put out, you know, we have this morning previously, but you can be assured and your listeners can be assured that the numbers are going to start to get very big. And yeah. all the revenues that generate are going to be put back into inventory or the trade finance that we uh, put in place is all going to be put into inventory. And as I say, you just put it in context, we're getting a 5 million facility from one place, 10 million facility from another. Well, that's an awful lot of units. <laughs> it it, it each, is. An awful... Each unit costs you what? Roughly? Yeah, it's, it's £10. Roughly. £10. Okay. Roughly. So if you want half a million units, it's going to cost you £5 million, basically. Yes. Absolutely. But then with those trade finance facilities, we can kick that in. 
and then they will take this inventory as quickly as we produce it. It's just that we have to manage it, and we're managing with them such that if we put it all on the shelf on day one, I've got nothing to replenish, then we're going to hit a problem. And the last thing you can do in retail is to let the shelf run dry, especially when you've got demand coming through the door. So we will produce as much inventory as we can. We will leave some, obviously, uh, in our warehouse, our, our secure warehouse in, in Zurich, ready for replenishing as and when the group asks for it. And then we'll just keep producing that that uh, those units as and when we recycle the cash. It's, and it's is a, there an issue? Is there an issue with producing the right amount of quantity? You know, this no. manufacturing has the ability to uh, produce a few million of these a year, if that's what's required. Absolutely, there are two two main elements to the production. One is the bottles, and this uh, this is a specialist bottle manufacturer that we've employed or contracted, I should say, out of Italy. And then we've talked before about Frika, or the uh, contract manufacturer in, in Zurich, and they they receive the bottles from Italy, they get all the ingredients for the, the formulation and, and the cream, they mix all that together according to our patented formula, they get all the packaging, they get all the bottle tops, they put it all together and then that's what's delivered to the group. The capacity of both the the company in Italy for the bottles and capacity for Frica in Zurich is literally millions and millions of tens of millions a year. Without breaking any confidences, you know, we've seen orders going through both in Italy and in Frika in Switzerland for some very well-known brands. Both companies supply to the very well-known high-end cosmetic brands. And one visit in Italy, there was a very known, well-known brand. I've got to be careful not to tell you what it is in my, in my presentation here. L'Oreal, it's for you. <laughs> but it, it was a run for 5 million bottles. And, you know, that was quite yeah. normal for them. And similarly, Frika have done those sort of size runs as well. So capacity is not an issue as much as we can throw at these guys they can produce yeah and i, I want people also to understand that the, this this the reason why this product is so different than than all of those other brands that we that, that, that you want to mention is that this actually does something yeah as and it gets into the skin it's a delivery system that's why it's so unique and why this they want it so much but Please understand that Incaldera is going to be a farmer play in the future. This is the beginnings of something that will allow you to make this pharmaceutical play and be worth many, many factors of what you will sell. And again, this is me saying and not you, but this is ultimately what I can see is going to happen. You're absolutely right. And even if we just looked at the cosmetic side, we've just been talking about the skin cell range and the deal we've got with Marino and Watsons and more deals we've got to sign in North America, South America, Australia coming up. That is going to make us a very big company on its own. However, we do still have our heritage, if you like, which is the pharmaceutical development. And, and you know, we are still going to keep that going. We're going to concentrate for the next six months or so to make sure we get this right and the launch go properly, because the last thing we want to do is take our eye off the ball. But, but yeah, Kevin, you're absolutely right. There, there are two plays here, essentially for investors and that is the very near term which we've just been talking about and the longer play which is the pharmaceutical development and you know that if we get that right and there's a lot of experience within the team on developing pharmaceuticals then you know that is a multi-billion dollar play in terms of the the, the potential for pharmaceutical drugs yeah. yeah and and the and the cosmetic side of things could easily turn into a billion pound company as well, just on on revenue and multiples. And the fact that, you know, in in these sort of cosmetic type plays, they have very, very high P ratios because people use these infinitum. You know, it's not a one-off product that you use once. You know, you're going to use it for probably your lifetime. So it's it's a very interesting play. I mean, uh, we are very excited for you. And I think... Uh, yeah, we look forward to maybe going out to Switzerland and seeing, as we discussed before. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. taking absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's. I think it's one of these things that happens once in a while that comes to the market that you've got something that is so scalable and at the same time has has a very good end use case in terms of the farmer side of things that. I, don't, I just don't think it happens very often. So people should really take notice of it. 
I'd agree with that. You know, I've been in business in the pharmaceutical sector for a long time now, built a lot of companies up from scratch. And this is very special. And I can see that. The whole team can see it. And so can everybody that looks at it. And as you say, just the, the, the cosmetic side, the research that, that was published a couple of months ago by Stanford was projecting some revenue numbers. And, I, and I, I'm saying quite confidently now, I'm, I'm, I know we will beat those projections that he's put in that, that uh, forecast. But you're very quickly getting up to you know 100 million revenues and more. And you're still maintaining that. In fact, the margin is increasing. You know, when I talk about 30% EBITDA, that margin will increase over time uh, just simply because that's the way it is. Uh, maybe the pricing of the product will increase. Uh, we'll get better, you know, value in terms of our buying power. Lots of things, you know, to, to contribute to increasing uh, EBITDA. But you just think of the, the numbers. And as you say, the typical PE ratios on company producing, you know, one, two, three hundred million with, with that sort of EBITDA bottom line. I mean, we're not going to stay where we are in terms of market capitalization, that's for sure, and, and share price. So. Yeah, no, and that's pretty obvious from these institutions wanting in and also the fact that uh, Emu Pharma have sold, sold their, their portion also to an institution on the basis that obviously that cash is going to be very useful for Emu Pharma to, to move forward and Emu Pharma also still have the warrants that they can exercise. So they're still going to be party to to what's going forward. So, and I know you're involved with Emu Pharma as well. So, uh, would you like? Yeah, to say I am. Uh, about so, that? so let let me take the comment, the the, the opportunity to comment on that. You know, Emu Pharma has supported Incanthera and Binavest for a very long time. They're a very big believer in Incanthera, and I think Canthera approving that that uh, that now. And it was very much a conversation between the two companies and the brokers and the institutions to allow that sale to take place and Imi Pharma wanted to facilitate what Incanthera are doing. But at the same time, you know, Imi Pharma, you know, they they've made a very good return on, on the investment so far. And as you say, Kevin, they've still got seven point three million warrants which are, are in the money and they'll be exercising those within the next three months before they expire. And they can see the continued upside of Incanthera. So Imi Pharma is excited about the prospects for Incanthera. Because they're st- although they're not on the share register at the moment, they're still a pseudo shareholder, if you like, with 7.3 million warrants, and they can see that value increasing every single day. So yeah, it's it's a good it's a good um, partnership between the two companies in that way. Yeah, I was having a conversation yesterday with high net worth individual, and I said to them that this this share really does have blue sky uh, potential. It's not very <laughs> often that you say a share can do a hundred times, but I think this has potential to do it whether you uh commit and, and actually exercise that we will all find out but there isn't many opportunities out there that say well this really does have the potential and it does so again good luck thank you very much yeah on that note we'll say tim mccarthy chairman of income therapy lc thanks very much for your time this podcast was brought to you by roast pr limited If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.